So we will have the discussion about the anti-tuberculosis uh, drugs, especially uh, the drugs you used against the treatment of tuberculosis and to some extent also mycoplasma. So, uh, of course, uh, most of the drugs uh, which we are discussing in this chapter are uh, uh, applicable to the human uh, medicine is concerned. But anyway, we have to learn it and uh, we'll try to adapt it to the veterinary practice is concerned. Okay. Then these are the uh, contents for tuberculosis classes, introduction, then uh, uh, the it will cover the basic information, types of tuberculosis, risk factors, of course, uh, the, the risk factor, then sign and symptoms of the tuberculosis, so etc. are related. Then uh, the sign and symptoms of tuberculosis, then diagnosis of tuberculosis, prevention. Of course, uh, we'll uh, very fastly, uh, uh, quickly, we'll uh, skip this uh, few of the things and we'll directly go to the treatment of tuberculosis. So, introduction to the tuberculosis is, of course, it's one of the oldest disease, the historical disease that is uh, uh, the, especially the tuberculosis is a human disease, but it is also a communicable and zoonotic disease. So, because of this thing, uh, it is uh, a, a, a applicable to all the, uh, all the, especially the animals and veterinary, of course, they are the same. And tuberculosis is uh, uh, bacteria is caused by the mycobacterium tuberculosis. So it's one of the untreatable disease. And uh, mainly in case of cattle, uh, it is said that the disease, uh, animals affected with the disease need not be cured, treated, but they need to be culled. Because of this thing, the treatment finding is in the infant stage. So the massive emaciation of a, the cattle is a very common phenomenon in the tuberculosis. and uh, the other slide, like the respiratory problem, etc. So, if you compare the TB with other diseases, then you will find about one third of the world population are suffering from uh, the tuberculosis, especially the underdeveloped countries. So, why we have to learn this disease in human beings is this is a important zoonotic disease. So, from the animals, it will come to the human beings, and also uh, from the human beings to the animal. So, India TB kills more the more adult than that of the other diseases, especially in case of uh, the large animals, it is a very common phenomenon, especially the 1980, when the HIV was spread with high prevalence of the tuberculosis infection, uh, because the, these patients are the immunocompromised patients. So the tuberculosis also become eight times more dangerous than that of the HIV. And the common most symptoms of the tuberculosis include the cough, fever, uh, night sweatings, weight loss, etc. Very similar to that of the brucellosis also. And there is one important disease. The symptoms may be uh, mild uh, for many months, then the people will be, many times it is it goes undiagnosed. Then uh, in the last stage only, whenever there is a miliary form of the tuberculosis, etc., then it will be found. So this disease is a... Uh, uh, told to be the disease of the poor, where the medical knowledge is minimum and uh, there is no hygienicity, etc. Then those who come in close contact for the course of a year. And most of the common diagnostic test is the PPD, injection of the intradermal tuberculin test. So the tuberculosis bacterium is made just uh, uh, the below the, uh, inside the forearm. And uh, the TB infection in breastfeeding women is a matter of the concern. And the incidence of tuberculosis in the underdeveloped countries like Africa, then Afghanistan, Pakistan, and, uh, and the developing countries like India is also one of the important criteria. Then full course should be given to the mother. The treatment nowadays, very good treatment is available and the most of the primary health care centers. But many times the people are not going to complete the course of the treatment. But nowadays, this uh, tuberculosis eradication program is there. Even then, the tuberculosis is one of the important diseases. So the infant should be received isonia Z. That's the drug of the choice. Then preventive treatment after ruling the activity be followed by the BCG vaccination, that's the bacillus for a time going. 
So breastfeeding any parts uh, whose mother is taking the isoniazid and uh, those on isoniazid preventive therapy should supplement it with the pyridoxine or else severe deficiency of the pyridoxine occurs. That's the basic knowledge need to be given to all. And the types of the tuberculosis uh, here, uh, very briefly we can go, that is uh, the activity or visibility, then the pulmonary and extrapulmonary. It is classified in this way. Whereas the activity and visibility, uh, the classification is, there is one, one case is the active TB, then the latent TB. Active TB means latent TB. Whereas the pulmonary or extrapulmonary are the tuberculosis pleurisy, then the cavitary tuberculosis and miliary tuberculosis. So all these are the classification of the tuberculosis, which is affecting the lung and also the extrapulmonary area. Because uh, especially the lungs, the pleurisy will be caused, whereas uh, the cavity tuberculosis, wherever there is a large cavities are there, then nodules are formed, then the miliary form of the tuberculosis is also related to a small type of the nodules which is present on the entire lung. So what is an active tuberculosis? So active tuberculosis is an infection uh, which the tuberculosis bacteria are rapidly multiplying and uh, invading different organs of the body and they are in the active form. They will be multiplying inside the cell and take the control of the cell and also the person suffering from active pulmonary TB has strong possibility to the spread the disease to the other people. And also, the just like the coronavirus infections, it's an airborne transmission of infectious particles to cough into the air. But the person who is having the, this type of the TB must uh, follow a gentleman behavior by informing very possible the person with who or he is meeting, but nobody will do this particular, what you call as the distance maintaining and uh, many, many more things. The person who is having uh, the tuberculosis made it awareness to the family members also, and should inform it to them that uh, the other person should not get infected with tuberculosis. So nowadays, uh, this uh, multi-drug treatment is employed in the treatment of the tuberculosis, of course, uh, uh, the drugs, uh, anyway, we are going to deal with the drugs. They are the, they will be treated with the combination of the different drugs. And the latent tuberculosis, yes, this is uh, uh, usually the people who received many, anyway, they have received the infection of the TB, may not get infected with it, but immediately, but it's on a, it takes a lot of time. There, is, there will not be any symptoms and the chest x-ray may be very normal, but the only manifestation I encounter may be reaction to the tuberculin test. That's the intradermal tuberculin test or also interferon gamma assay, IgAR. So only this test, but many times many this disease will go unnoticed and at the last stage only the disease will be diagnosed. <laughs> and the, by that time the person would have spread the disease to so many others. So uh, the risk factor is associated with the HIV medications, also the immunocompromise is there. Of course, nowadays for HIV also, good drugs are available, like Tamiflu and other drugs, which are uh, now with the earlier, the death was the ultimate end of the HIV, and now it is uh, being controlled by so many drugs or, and also some vaccines. And uh, the tuberculosis, pleurisy in very short, we'll have the discussion. This is the condition which takes place just after initial infection. Then the granuloma located in the edge of the lung ruptures into the pleural space. And this, the space between the lungs and uh, at the edge of the lung, it ruptures into several pleural space. Then uh, what happens is this will go to spread to the entire chest wall. So the pleurisy is one of the inflammation of pleural sac and the bacteria will invade the entire space. Then the fluid quantity will increase automatically and compress the lung, causing shortness of the breath. That's why in such situation, the people will understand the problem of this thing and the sharp chest pain that worsens with a deep breath. So that's called as the pleurisy. 
So if uh, many of the persons, especially the labor class people, will have this type of the uh, type of the symptoms and they will get uh, neglected and drastic the reduction in the weight of the person will end and there will be severe anemia and ultimately death will be there. So one need to be very careful while you are traveling in the train or the bus or through any other means, social gathering, etc. So if any person is coughing, try to maintain the distance with him. Have the mask or sometimes the, at least you should have some kerchief so that uh, you can prevent the entry of the bacteria into your lungs. So the cavity tuberculosis is associated with upper part of the lungs and uh, it causes severe destructions of the lung by the forming varieties of the cavities or making large air spaces. And this type of the TB generally seen in the reactive, this reactivation case, reputation case. So the here, the upper parts of the lobes get into the trouble because there is a high amount of the oxygen and TB bacteria love this condition for their growth, especially tuberculosis bacteria want a lot of air and the cavity tuberculosis uh, occur at primary infections. Whereas this is detectable in the X-ray because the uh, symptoms like the cough, night sweats, fever, weight loss, and the weakness will take the persons to a doctor. And there, if they suspect it, well and fine. Then miliary tuberculosis is a rare form of the active tuberculosis and uh, occurs when bacteria find their way into the bloodstream means the disease like they take place only after the entry of the TB bacteria into the blood circulation. So even though the bacteria loves the lung tissues, but lung tissue, but it will also enter the blood through the circulation. So because of this thing, the bacteria quickly spread all over the body in tiny nodules and affect multiple organs at, at a once. And this form of the TB can be rapidly, it is fatal. So biliary form of the tuberculosis, the incidence is somewhat high. Then the laryngeal tuberculosis can infect the larynx, the vocal cord, and it is extremely infectious. So these varieties of the tuberculosis uh, symptoms need to get uh, the attention. And also the osteal tuberculosis, just uh, we are listing here, uh, the it is going to affect the bones, then the kidney, then adrenal uh, tuberculosis, then also the meningitis. It will cross the brain, brain barrier and enter the meninges. Then also the pericarditis, tuberculosis, pericarditis, tuberculosis, peritonitis. Yes, in the liver and the abscesses are also seen in the peritoneal cavity and lymph node diseases. So many of the lymph nodes are also get affected. Then what are the risk factors and cause of the tuberculosis? It's very well understood that medications that suppress the immune suppression. So any drug, anti-tuberculosis drugs or anti-HIV drugs, anti-chemotherapy drugs or the drugs used for the chemical therapy of the cancers uh, will get the tuberculosis disease. So here may varieties of the disorders are there and uh, uh, the treatment taken for these drugs may predispose the patient to the tuberculosis, especially the RA rheumatoid arthritis is also one of the disease where the, there is a immunosuppression because uh, joint pain is caused and they are going to continuously take the uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. And Crohn's disease, that's also known as the inflammatory bowel diseases. So, in this disease also, there is immunosuppression and uh, the psoriasis is a chronic uh, uh, skin condition caused by the overactive immune system and symptoms include the flaking, inflammation, thick, white, silvery or red patches of the skin. And uh, systemic lupus erythematous, which is also called as the lupus, is a systemic autoimmune disease that occurs when our body the immune system attacks our own tissues, that is, then organs. Then the cancer, yes, this is one of the most important type of the disease involving abnormal cell growth, uncontrolled cell growth, with the potential to invade the other parts of the body, and this is called as the metastasis. So many times the primary disease may be cured, 
there may be ovarian cancers, there may be the cancers of the breast, cancers of the throat and many more, but it, the cancer cells uh, get entry inside the blood vesicles or the capillaries, then they get large in some other organ, that's called as the metastasis, and they, the organ will develop the cancer. So the other risk factors are the many times the issues of the tobacco, then uh, the TV and uh, poor economy, illiteracy, disease, malnutrition, hesitation. And this is also very important that the hesitation, fear that dangerous uh, diagnosis will be create a bad, bad impression in the society. So this is one of the most important superstitions, just like the leprosy or the kushtaroga, this is called as the Kshayaroga. So many people will not accept the persons who are suffering from the tuberculosis and go away from them. That's why just like the quarantine, what is imposed during the COVID outbreak, similarly, the people will have the fear of diagnosis. So this is uh, whenever the people, uh, medical people come to the colleges, etc. some people run away because if the phone positive, then you will be quarantined. So this is also quarantine is also very important in case of the tuberculosis. And that's why the hesitation then, other than this one, uh, the superstitions, many, many superstitions are there. The persons who are infected with the tuberculosis should not uh, worship the God and he should not move in the society. Then he should not uh, swim in the water where or swimming and mixing in the social gatherings, all these are prohibited. There will be a social boycott to the persons who are suffering from the tuberculosis. That's why it is uh, prohibited. Maybe the persons should not involve in Here, uh, of course, uh, this is also another important area where there are a lot of superstitions are exhibiting in India is concerned, and uh, the poor economy is also one of the reason. But nowadays, the government has uh, made uh, many of the provisions so that the poor can be treated using so many government schemes are there. So anti -tuber tuberculosis eradication scheme is there. The person will be given all the medications free of cost, including the vitamins and uh, the other drugs. So, but the only thing is it should be get diagnosed. Then the clinical signs of the tuberculosis, number one, weightless. So it is immunosuppressive and uh, the leptin is not in the weight regulation and the night sweating. What may be the reason for night sweating? Because it seems likely that night sweats associated with active tuberculosis. So this is a response of the part of the signaling molecules released by the cells of the immune system as they react to the infectious organism. Then there is high temperature, the bacteria themselves may be releasing fewer causing signals. So in response to these circulating chemical signals, the hypothalamus resets body temperature to a higher level for a while. Then tiredness and fatigue. So this is because of excessive coughing. Because of the coughing, you, the person who is affected with TB will have a lot of chest pain and tightness in the chest along with the breathing problem. Then the swelling in the neck, especially the lymph nodes of the neck affected to the extent of 25%. So then the glands will be sick, the swollen. This is reason for the swelling up of the neck. Then a persistent cough is also one of the clinical sign. And uh, bone and joints, yes, uh, the, of course, it is difficult to diagnose. Uh, then the meningitis, which is uh, the symptoms, will be exhibited by the very high fever, excruciating headache, then confusion, drowsiness, etc. Then impairment of the functions of the liver and kidney is also one of the things need to be considered. Then blood test, uh, how the diagnosis? The blood test is uh, done by the immune reaction system, system reactions, that's the quantity ferron TB gold tube test or the T-POT test are there. And uh, 
the skin test usually intradermal tuberculin test is there so it is a skin test where small injections of this uh, uh, the tuberculin antigen is the tt tb bacteria will be made just below the inside the forearm and uh, the injection site should be checked two to three days and if there is a hard red bump is found then you can say that the person is positive to tb and also the imaging test like the x-ray ct scan all these will really reveal the status of the lungs so in the bronchoscopy yes sir, of course it is inserted inside the nostrils or the mouth to see the lungs and the sputum examination is also the easiest techniques for diagnosing and the lung biopsy small biopsy tissues from the lungs will be collected and subject to the rt pcr and many more tests so here you can see that uh, tuberculosis sputum diagnosis the uh, sputum sample is collected in a uh, vial suspected patients open sample then the diagnostic kit is open then a drop of the sputum will be put then the culture media so this is uh, the pre occupied culture media of course the growth of the mycobacterium tuberculosis is very very slow so the later once the growth is uh, seen then the inoculum is taking inoculating loop a colony of the bacteria will be taken for the fever culture and this will be treated inside the culture media then it is confirmed by the microscopic test that is the tuberculosis sputum diagnosis so the acid pass bacilli test is conducted and then uh, special staining tests are there so by this the it is diagnosed and the skin test is also called as the montucs tuberculosis test where a small injection of the tuberculin extract of the bacteria is made uh, just below the four r and the tuberculosis is a fraction of purified protein derived from the mt or mycobacterium tuberculosis so the immune system of the body will react and there will be a swelling after two to three days there will be a hard red bump and this will indicate that the result test which is uh, the bumps are which are smaller than 5 mm then it is negative whereas if it is more than 5 mm then it is positive positive so this is uh, the way how it is done the tuberculosis uh, this, this is a fraction of the purified protein derived from the mt or microbial mycobacterium tuberculosis an injection uh, especially of the forearm is given so here the injection is given on the forearm a small circular area will be formed then after the observation is done 48 to 72 hours of course before is giving the injection also the area is measured then if it is less than the few millimeter especially in the earlier slide we have the 5 mm then it is negative but whereas it is more than 5 mm then what we can say is it is positive this is the simple uh, test then prevention of the tuberculosis of course all the tuberculosis uh, uh, prevention programs uh, number one is keeping away from the persons who are affected with the tuberculosis and the tuberculosis is one of the very slow growing bacterium and does not transfer easily from one person to another it's not easy but we can also say it is not possible it is possible so the infect the people stay close to infected person for more than 6 months will have a tuberculosis especially the preventive measures should always be followed by the patient and healthy individuals go for regular routine check up and you get stayed and the persons veterinary doctors of course uh, yourself who are involved in the animal treatment should always get themselves checked for pb whenever he, he or she is having the uh, recurrent coughs then the decrease in the body weight then anemia all these symptoms are there and stay away from the work school or college till your give you treatment 
them advise it's to safe to return and uh, the tissues are like uh, the sputum etc should be sealed in a plastic bag and thrown out then always cover your mouth with the mask well coughing sneezing or the laughing also then open windows when possible to ensure very good quantity of the air <coughs> freshly it should come inside the time then avoid sleeping in the same room as other people and the people who are infected with the tb wear a surgical mask uh, known as the respirator to keep the tb particles from spreading to the others and the immune system should always be very active by healthy eating habits exercising regularly and getting sufficient sleep only these three habits many of you students will not follow because we will not health healthy eating habits so most of us will have the junk food in the evening we will eat lot of pani puris bel puris masalas etc then no exercise or regularly we will not go for the walk or involved in the sports activities and many the last but not important thing is many of us will not sleep in proper time the sleeping time total in a stretch required per day is the minimum 8 hours so one should sleep at the 10:30 and get at the 6:30 so that will be sufficient so you will uh, sleep very late in the night 1 o'clock 2 o'clock or uh, sometimes 3 o'clock also by observing the movie etc then uh, uh, hurriedly get up and uh, uh, you immediately you rush to the class that should not be the healthy practice so try to avoid all these habits then coming to the actual topic the treatment of tuberculosis there are the first line drugs like isoniazid rifamycin then the pyrazinamide ethambutol then streptomycin these are all the first line drug of course these are used since a long and the second line line drugs are the fluoroquinolones so we have learned that any of the modern uh, fluoroquinolones like ofloxacin levofloxacin then moxifloxacin and ciprofloxacin so the mechanism of action of the fluoroquinolones uh, hope many of you might have forgotten or remember so here it is going to inhibit the synthesis of the dna of the bacterial dna how the thing is the dna gyrase enzyme is one of the important enzyme and it is involved in the synthesis of the dna strands so the uncoiling and supercoiling of the strands will be inhibited by the fluoroquinolones binding to a specific binding site and also the nick formation a nick will be formed then at that particular nick just like a cut then it will be joined together so this process will be uh, this process will be inhibited and the uncoiling and supercoiling is a process in which the dna strands or the uh, genetic materials are packed in the bacterial cell so this will be inhibited by the fluoroquinolones and the oral uh, drugs like the rifabutin terizodin cycloserine rifamycin then ethinodiamide so all these are <coughs> the other orally acting drugs then apart from this one there are few of the others like rotinamide then para amino salicylic acid or it's also called as the pas p a s then the injections like the amic acid kanamycin then capreomycin all these are the protein synthesis inhibitors so these drugs are uh, uh, many times they are used of course uh, more, all the drugs are highly toxic both ototoxicity and of course the nephrotoxicity need to be used to be uh, used to treat the patient suffering from the tuberculosis so alternative classification of the tuberculosis based on the group and you can write any of this group like group 1 or the first line agents like isoniazid then rifamycin then pyrazinamide then ethambutol these are the first line drugs all the tb should be treated with these first line drugs only but many times what happens 
the patient may be allergic to these drugs and sometimes the toxicity, etc. Then the group two drugs, they are the injectable drugs. When the condition is acute, then streptomycin, canamycin, amikacin, and capriomycin. All these, the aminoglycoside drugs are used. Whereas the group three are fluoroquinolones like ofloxacin, levo, moxy, and ciprofloxacin are there. And group five or group four, second generation oral drugs like ethionamide, then protheonamide, cyclosarine, terizodone, uh, then PAS, then ripabutene and ripabutene. All these are there. And group five, with, without any clear efficacy, a clear efficacy like radaquilin, then clarithromycin, then clofazamine, then linezozide, and uh, the imipenem and silastatin. All these are also used. In many times, the, uh, the oral drugs may be followed by the parenteral injections, and they are used in the combination. Or two oral drugs may be combined. So this depends upon the patient's condition, how he will respond to drugs, tolerance capacity, etc., stage of the disease, and many more. So, here you can see that uh, many of the drugs, how they are going to act here. The number one is the tuberculosis cell wall synthesis inhibitors are the isoniazid, then cycloserine, and ethambutol, which are the first uh, line of the drug. Then ethionamide, then this, uh, proteinamide. So all these are especially important. Just wait for a minute. Isoniazid will enter. Isoniazid will enter the uh, cell mycobacterium. Then isoniazid is inside the bacterial cell. Then catalase peroxidase is uh, there. It is inhibited and it is converted to catalase peroxidase enzyme. Then isoniazid will convert to the inactive form to active form in the bacterial cell. Then it will form a co covalent bond with the certain bacterial enzymes. Then it reacts with the certain genes which are responsible for the bacterial growth and inhibit the mycolic acid synthesis. Then the weak cell wall will be formed. Instead of lysis, it's going to form the weak cell wall. Then the tuberculosidal activity will be brought by this uh, particular drug is concerned. Then this is the structure of the isoniazide, a ring with benzene ring with NH and uh, the NH2 moiety. Here is the O molecule is there or the oxygen molecule is present. Then another drug that is uh, the rifampicin, uh, one of the most common drugs used in the treatment of the tuberculosis, a semi-synthetic antibiotic produced from the streptomyces mediterranean. So the antibiotic. So it has a broad spectrum of activity, including the activity against the several forms of the mycobacterium tuberculosis. So the susceptible organisms it needs DNA dependent RNA polymerase activity. 
So it forms a stable complex with the particular enzyme, DNA dependent RNA for polymerase. So how it is going to do this thing is it thus suppresses the initiation of the RNA synthesis, bacterial RNA synthesis will be inhibited. And rifamycin is a bactericidal and acts on both intracellular and extracellular organisms. Yes. Just wait a minute. Okay, so the rifamycin, you know, the DNA dependent RNA poly polymerase enzyme will be inhibited. And uh, this is the one of the important step in the bactericidal action of uh, the drug. Then the mechanism of action is understood, then the one of the most potent and broad spectrum antibiotic against the bacterial pathogens. And it is an antibiotic that inhibits the DNA dependent RNA polymerase and uh, does not inhibit the mammalian enzyme. This is very specific because that enzyme is not present. So the bactericidal and has a very broad spectrum of activity against most of the gram positive and gram negative, especially the mycobacterium. Tuberculosis. So the rifampicin or rifamycin is a drug of choice. And uh, because of rapid, the rifamycin is also a uh, drug of choice for the another intracellular bacteria that is uh, the brucellosis. And uh, rifamycin is well absorbed after orally and distributed widely in the body. And it is metabolized in the liver, eliminated in bile, and to much extent in the urine also. Then the structure of the rifamycin, just have the look. Then the site of action of this uh, particular rifamycin, especially it is going to, penicillin and cyclosporins are going to bind with the cell wall and also they are going to inhibit. So the, some of these drugs are also protein synthesis inhibitors like the tetracycline, chloramphenicol, erythromycin, clindamycin, etc. So, I think we have discussed this several times how this multiple DNA kyrase enzyme is inhibited by the many of the organisms and the rifamycin, metanodazole, acyclovir, and zidovidin they are going to inhibit the DNA function by depending upon DNA dependent RNA polymerase enzyme. So the antimicrobial uh, drugs here, uh, these lot, lot of uh, drugs have been mentioned here. Then the this uh, pyrazinamide mechanism of action is pyrazinamide is another drug. It kills the stops the growth of the certain bacteria that cause the TB. And it is used with another drug to cause the treat the tuberculosis. And it is highly specific agent and is active only against the yam T. And uh, the pyrazinamide gets activated to pyri xenoic acid in the bacilli where inter this uh, interferes with the fatty acids in this FASI and this interferes with the bacterium's ability to synthesize the new fatty acids. So this is uh, action is a little bit different because it is going to activate it to pyrozoic acid, pyrozoic acid and interfere with fatty acid synthesis. So you remember this thing and uh, Usually, the, it needs to get inside the bacterial cell and act on the mycobacterium tuberculosis also. So under acidic conditions, the pyrazoic acid that slowly leaks out and converted to the protonated conjugatic acid and it is diffused 
diffuse easily back into the bacilli and accumulate. So the bacteria is going to die. Then ethambutol is uh, another drug mechanism of action is uh, it is an anti-tuberculosis drug that inhibits the transfer of mycolic acids into the cell wall of the tubercle bacillus. So the action is usually bactericidal in nature and uh, it is lethal to the bacteria is concerned. Whereas the ethambutol is an oral chemotherapeutic agent which is specifically effective against actively growing microorganisms especially the yum tuberculosis. So it's a very specific drug. So many times the combination of uh, this ethambutol, rifamycin is uh, being given to act as the synergistic agents, whereas the ethambutol inhibits the RNA synthesis and decreases the tuberculosis bac bacterial replication inside the cell. Most of the stains of M tuberculosis, M, uh, this uh, canesi, as well as number of stains of MAC are sensitive to ethambutol. And ethambutol inhibits the arabinose transferase, which is involved in the cell wall biosynthesis. So the another mechanism is uh, by the inhibition of arabinose transferase, the bacterial cell wall complex production is inhibited. And this leads to increase in cell wall permeability and cell wall lysis occurs. So this is the structure of the ethambutol. And compared to rifamycin, it is having very simple structure. Then the pyrazinamide, the mechanism of action, it is explained as early. So it is going to enter inside the bacterial cell by the active diffusion. Then the it is going to combine with an enzyme, that's the, then pyrazolamide's active form will be that, very similar to that of the rifamycin. The, most of the drugs are converted to active drug when they come inside the cell and accumulate in acidic medium and interact with other fatty acids. So please remember that these are not going to affect any proteins. They are going to interact with the bacterial fatty acids and inhibit the mycolic acid synthesis and ultimately a weak cell wall is formed and the cell membrane is also disrupted and ultimately the tuberculosis microorganism will die. Then streptomycin, uh, yes, we know very well about the streptomycin produced by the actinomycetin, that is streptomyces griseus and it's going to bind with the 30S. We have learned about the pharmacology and other things. So, it is irreversibly going to bind with specific 30S subunit and also in this uh, 30S only, it is going to bind with 60S of the RNA. So it binds to the nucleotide of the 60S RNA and because of this thing, the protein synthesis is inhibited. Then uh, of course, it interacts with the decoding site of the vicinity, especially in case of the mycobacterium the 1,460 RS and 30 Of course, we have learned this in very detail, especially while interacting with the amino glycoside type of the antibiotic. And this leads to the interference with initiation complex, misreading of the mRNA. So incorrect amino acids are inserted into the polypeptide, leading to non-functional or toxic peptides and back, break up of polysomes into non-functional nanosomes. So structure of the streptomycin, we have already dealt with in detail, and then it's better to skip this thing. So the dose of this streptomycin, of course, it is uh, the one, totally one gram is injected per day for a minimum of 10 to 15 days. And we need to take care of the kidneys by estimating the gadduria nitrogen and uh, the serum creatinine once in three days. So if it is damaged, then we should stop. And the mechanism of action of tuberculosis in one word, what we can say is there, the DNA replication pathway is inhibited, then the DNA synthesis is inhibited. Especially it's, uh, the during protein synthesis, DNA replication, the double standard DNA needs to be unwind into a single standard structure, which allows for complementary base pairing to occur and synthesis of 
the mRNA to proceed. Then this unwinding of the DNA in bacteria is done by the enzymes in the bacteria called as the DNA kinase, or the DNA, the same thing, DNA kinase is called as the DNA topo isomerase, and uh, the topo isomerase two type of the enzyme that unwinds the DNA by introducing negative supercoiling. So instead of positive supercoiling, negative supercoiling is there, and uh, also help the relaxed uh, positive supercoils. And uh, both of the quinolones and uh, the fluoroquinolones inhibit this enzyme by inhibiting to the A subunit of the enzyme, due to which the bacteria is unable to replicate. So this is the mechanism in very short about the fluoroquinolones, and we have already learned about this thing. So the fluoroquinolones, fluorinated chlorolones is they are quinolones with fluorination moiety at the position six, and different uh, these fluoroquinolones will take place like the replacing of, of the different subunits. And of course, so many super, these fluoroquinolones are there. And here the saline fixture, the, uh, the norflux and just for your recalling. So does not achieve adequate uh, plasma because it is not absorbed properly. Then uh, the drug, the absorbed part of the drug will be used for the treatment of UTI and genital infection. Cipro is most widely used uh, in many cases. Of course, the Cipro is also used in the treatment of the typhoid. In the pefloxacin, the, uh, this uh, passing into the CSF is good and is used in meninges. Ofloxacin, long-acting UTI, respiratory tract infections, and also the gonorrhea. Then lomefloxacin has long half-life and spar Gram positive organism is uh, affected, atypical pneumonia is caused, then also the chlamydial infection, TB, and the MAC infections is all the that, that is parfluxacin. And uh, the recent agents like the gatifloxacin, they are active against the gram positive, then atypical pneumonia or pathogens. And levo better active against the gram positive organisms and a typical pneumonia. Pathogens is eliminated mainly through the kidneys and long acting, yes, used as the drug. The structure of the quinolones is like this, and uh, already we have learned in the fluoroquinolones in detail. Let us not go in detail because we are concerned with the anti tuberculosis activity of these uh, drugs nalidic acid, oxalic acid, nor cipro, ofloxacin, etc. So this is uh, the summarization as anti-tuberculosis action and characteristic of the adverse effects, especially the drug isoniazid. It is having the anti-tuberculosis actions on the intra and extracellular organisms act on the acidic and alkaline medium. So it causes the toxicity of peripheral neuritis, hepatitis, scissors, and the psychosis. Whereas the rifamycin, it is a anti-tuberculosis drug which causes the sidle activity and uh, persists uh, the, the, for the then persisters and drug resistant organisms are affected. Then it causes the hepatotoxicity, flu-like syndrome, then nephritis, then urine and secretions are colored. So remember that the person who is administered with the rifamycin, the orange colored blood is affected. Whereas the pyrazinamide, it kills intracellular organisms more active in case of the acidic pH. Of course, it also causes the hepatotoxicity, then arthralgia, hyperemic, then emaciation, all these things are caused. The streptomycin causes the ototoxicity and the nephrotoxicity inhibits the 30th subunit of the bacteria. The ethambutal, the tuberculostatic drug, inhibits the tubercle bacilli in the walls of the cavity. Then here, the optic neuritis, the nerve is damaged, and there will be visual impairment. Uh, especially the red, green color blindness will happen. So the other drugs like teleacetazole, then tuberculostatic, low, low efficacy, delays development of resistance to the drugs. Most of the times it causes the hepatotoxicity, but dermatitis is also one of the causes. So coming to the overall treatment of for the tuberculosis is uh, concerned, then 
the oral tuberculosis is uh, the mycobacterium tuberculosis is an aerobic intracellular microorganism. So in favorable condition, this constant may be dormant condition for long time, maybe years together, and gets whenever there is a favorable conditions, immunosuppression, then it will invade various cells. And uh, rapidly growing with high bacillary load will be one of the form of the diseases in the initial stage. Then uh, the slow growing form, especially the located intracellularly and the inflamed site, especially the pH is low acidic medium, that's called as the acid fast uh, bacilli. Then uh, the sputas found mostly within the caseous materials where oxygen tension is low, but pH is neutral. And dormant bacilli are also present. So the goal of the treatment is to kill dividing bacilli, kill persisting bacilli, prevent emergence of the resistance. Then uh, standard, the, uh, this uh, treatment for the multidrug resistant tuberculosis is, suppose there is a invasive phase of six to 19 months, then continuation phase, 18 months. So here, the drugs that can be used are the kenamycin or the leofloxacin, then ethylamide, cycloserine, then pyrazinamide and etermitol. All these drugs are used in the invasive phase of the bacteria. That's for six to nine months. Whereas the continuation phase, that's the 18 months, levofloxacin, then ethanamide, then cycloserine, and etermitol. All these are used. But while using these drugs, pyridoxin should always be combined with the therapy, 100 milligram per K day per kg orally for the prolonged period, as long as the drug is administered. Then MDR, or the multi-drug resistance in the treatment of the tuberculosis occurs by the several methods. So the TB that does not respond to least types is uh, this isoniazid and lipomycin, and the, this isoniazid and lipomycin are the two powerful anti-TB drugs. If it is not responding, then we can say that this is a multi-drug resistant TB. The two reasons why multidrug resistance continues to merge and spread are the mismanagement of the TB treatment. And many times the persons will never consume the tablets, etc. Et the medication is not completed. The most people are cured by the strictly followed by six month treatment is required, not in one or two months. Six month drug regimen that is provided to patients with support of the supervision. Of course, there will be toxicity slides. But uh, when compared to the benefit and risk ratio, the benefit is more than that of the risk. Inappropriate or improper treatment and uh, improper medication, uh, drugs, uh, and the improper duration of administration will always res uh, end up with the resistance. And the drug resistance can be detected using the special laboratory tests, which test the bacteria for sensitivity, culture and sensitivity is then very similar to that of the other bacteria. The tests are molecular type as uh, uh, the MTB and RIF are also culture-based, a simple test. The molecular techniques can provide results within house and how the successfully implemented in low resource settings also useful. Then solutions to control drug resistant TB. What is the solution? Is to cure the TB patient the first time around only he need to be cured. There should not be any relapse and provide access to the proper diagnosis in proper time. Then ensure adequate infection control facilities where the patients are treated means he need to be properly quarantined. The materials like secretions, putum, et cetera, need to be disposed very properly. And uh, the second line of the drug should also be used just like the six months one drug need to be used and also the further 18 months, the another drug need to be used. So what is the, you may have the question, suppose the these animals or the women are breastfeeding, then what need to be done? Then full course should be given to the mother and breastfeeding should be continued. Please remember, breastfeeding need to be continued. The infant should receive isoniazid preventive treatment because 
the microorganism is secreted in very high quantity in the milk and it is very very resistant bacteria stable bacteria so it will enter the kit and the kid need to be vaccinated with bcg bacillus palatine going and uh, the breast feed infants whose mother is taking isoniazid and uh, those on isoniazid the preventive therapy should be supplemented with always the pyridoxin 5 mg per kg or 100 mg totally per day for the entire duration of the treatment because the all these drugs will cause the deficiency of the vitamins that's pyridoxin vitamin b6 so tuberculosis is also a problem in case of the hiv of course the animals are not affected with hiv and uh, there is a lot of risk especially in case of hiv and uh, they need to be treated both for hiv and also for the tuberculosis so this is uh, not the case especially the standard guidelines as for world health so here already it is later that the invasive phase in the first phase the gamomycin levomycin any one of the drugs can be given there is the continuous phase either levofloxacin ethanamide and cyclosporin and this drug is need to be used so this is the summary of entire treatment protocol the mechanism of action the isoniazid is going to inhibit the mycolic acid and the cell wall synthesis will be inhibited so the tuberculosis parents there will be normal individuals and also the aids persons so there are the latent conditions and active conditions are also involved so uh, these are all the line of treatments especially the diagnosis is based on the blood test then skin test that's the intradermal tuberculin test so most of the cattle farms if a case is found to be positive with tb entire herd need to be screened like uh, all the cattle should be injected with the intradermal tuberculin test then if they are confirmed for the tuberculosis they need to be culled there is no other method because in cattle Uh, maybe any of these drugs with any of the drugs so long treatment is not at all possible hence at present the limitations of uh, the anti tb drugs is uh, the even though the, the incidence of tb is very high in case of the sheep and goat and also in case of cattle we are the not effectively treating the particular disease so in future or the further days are ahead to find a very suitable drug in case of the cattle is concerned which can be active orally and one of the constraint in anti tuberculosis drugs is most of the drugs like rifamycin isoniazid ethambutol all these drugs will get destroyed in the rumen so they are not going to absorb into the circulations and most of the animals affected are the ruminants so with this we are going to end this uh, particular anti tuberculosis section and to tomorrow we may come up with the anti neoplastic drugs are concerned